Hello robot builders, my name is Stu and I'm the robot promoter here at Modular Robotics. Today I'm here to show you how to use Scratch to reprogram your Moss robot. Scratch is a block-based programming language from the super smart people at MIT. And Moss is a robot construction system from the super smart people at Modular Robotics. Use them together to easily build and reprogram your own robots. In this tutorial, we will work through the complete process of reprogramming this robot guard into a stoic sentinel, an excellent robotic guard of bedrooms. By completing this tutorial, you'll be well on your way to the summit of Mount I'm Awesome at Building Robots. To get started, you'll need a few things. First, you'll need a Bluetooth enabled Mac or PC. Second, you'll need to build the Stoic Sentinel robot. You can find instructions for this robot by clicking here or by visiting the Robot Recipes section on modrobotics.com. Finally, you'll need to download and install the Scratch 2 offline editor and the Moss Scratch launcher, both of which are available here or by visiting the programming section for Moss on modrobotics.com. Please pause the tutorial here and install any necessary software and complete your robot construction. All set? Okay, let's go. We're gonna start by connecting our robot via Bluetooth. And on my Mac, I'm gonna open up Bluetooth Preferences, turn on my robot, and down here you should see your Moss Brain Block appear. Moss Brain Blocks have a three-letter code that follows the name Moss, and that helps you distinguish uh, which brain block you're trying to connect to. So if you're in the classroom, you could have a lot of brain blocks around. You want to identify the one that matches with the LED colors that are blinking on your Moss brain block. In this case, I only have one, and so I'm going to select pair. And it will take a second for this guy to sync up, but you'll see once it's connected. Uh, and then what we want to do is open up our Moss Scratch Launcher. And our Moss Scratch Launcher will have the different brain blocks uh, detected. And what you want to do is connect to the same one that you had connected to uh, in your Bluetooth preferences. Now, uh, sometimes you might have to hit rescan in order to bring that up. And then you can connect in to your uh, Moss brain block. Let's see here. There it goes. And now inside the Moss Scratch Launcher, you'll see that there are a few different uh, ways you can start playing with Scratch, but we're gonna focus on this one here. It's the Create New Project, and that will open up our Moss Scratch offline editor. Uh, and from here, this is where we will be programming our robot. So uh, the way you know that you've done this successfully is that you should have this more blocks section. And inside this more blocks section, you have all the unique Moss only blocks that will enable you to control your robots. So what we need to do is first start by just uh, learning a little bit about the interface. Inside the scripts pane in the more blocks uh, section, you can pull down the various Moss uh, block types. And Scratch works by dragging in little code blocks together. And you can see as I drag in code blocks, they, we get a little highlight that says they're going to connect together. And that snaps the blocks into place. Now I can move these blocks around as one big collective unit. If I start by clicking and going up, whoa, that's new. <laughs> if I start by clicking and going up, you can see that I move the blocks as a whole. But if I click and pull down, I have separated the blocks into different categories. If I want to get rid of blocks, I right click and select delete. So we're going to start our tutorial with this uh, block here, the set face state two. And we're going to need three of these blocks. So I'm going to pull in three different copies of them. And we're going to be setting faces two and three to outputs because faces two and three, if you remember from the instructions, are being are the uh, controlling faces for our motors. Now, face number seven is actually our proximity sensor, and we want to read data from that face. So we're going to change the state to input. Now, from here, what we're going to do is start by uh, pulling in a bunch of different blocks that will help us uh, control some things. And we're going to start over here in our data section of the scripts pane. And we're going to start by making a variable. 
And for this variable, we're gonna pick a name. In this case, this is going to represent our proximity sensor. So let's name it sensor. We're gonna hit okay. And now you'll see that we have a little sensor uh, indicator up here in our drawing pane. And now what we're gonna do is move into the uh, control, or excuse me, uh, here in our data pane, what we need to do is set the value of the sensor equal to um, our face. So we're gonna set the sensor value to, and here's a little variable. Now we can plug in different things into these white variable boxes. In this case, we're actually going to pull in a value of face block and put it inside uh, this little white variable box. And you can see uh, that Scratch uh, has these little block-based um, connection pieces. And if I just connect them like this, it hasn't actually embedded the block. Scratch has this uh, little weird quirk to it that I need to align the left edge of my block. See how it highlights there? The left edge of my block inside in order to embed that. So you wanna make sure that you're properly embedding, otherwise you're not gonna get the, the robot to behave the way you want it to. So here we're setting our sensor to a value equal to face number seven, which is our input sensor, our proximity sensor. Okay, now what we need to do is set up a condition uh, that will activate our robots. We're gonna use an if-then statement. So I'm gonna grab this block out of control in the scripts pane, there is an if-then block. And you'll notice the if-then block has a couple different features about it than some of the other blocks we've seen up here. First, we have this uh, little cutout notch. And what that cutout notch means is that we can plug other blocks in that space and the if-then statement will run all the blocks in that statement if then occurs. So what we need to do is define uh, what's inside this little hexagon here. And for that, we need something called an operator. Now an operator, uh, you can see inside Scratch has these little shape indicators. And in this particular case, we want to create a robot that uses this greater than symbol. So again, we're gonna align that left edge and that will enable us to plug in a couple values here. So now what we're gonna do is we need a situation where if the value of the sensor exceeds a certain mark, then we want to run a program. So in order to do that, we need to go back to our data uh, section and we're gonna pull down our sensor and drop our sensor into that first block. So this is saying, if our sensor is reading a value greater than, in this case, let's just pick one at 35, then we're gonna do something. But now what we need to do is define what that something is. So for that, we're gonna use uh, a very trusty block here. Uh, it's the set face value two block. And you can see that I can set the face value two block by uh, dropping it in between our little sandwich of the if block there. And I need two of these because I need to control both motors two and three. So I'm gonna set the face two to a value of 50 and set face three to a value of 50. Now, uh, there's a uh, something you should know about MOS motors in that the values of 50 are equal to a dead stop for MOS motors. Values above 50 spin in one direction and values below 50 spin in the other. So in this case, we're gonna have our robot, uh, assuming you've built it just like the instructions stated, we're gonna set both faces two and three to a value of zero. Now, what we've done is basically created a block of code that says if the sensor value exceeds 35, set the motors spinning at value zero indefinitely. Well, we don't want them to spin forever. So what we wanna do is set a bracket, a control on that. We're gonna use this wait seconds block to help us do that. So below our set base value blocks, we're gonna have our robot uh, march forward for two seconds. Now, uh, what we need to do after that two seconds is define a stopping behavior. So we're gonna go back to our set face value blocks inside the more blocks section. I'm gonna pull in two of these. And once again, we're gonna be changing the behavior of faces two and three. And this time, 
uh, we're going to keep the default value of 50 so that our robot comes to a stop. So now we've created a behavior where upon triggering our sensor, our robot is going to drive forward for two seconds and then come to a stop. Now, we need to make sure that he comes to a complete stop. So before we issue the next command, we're going to put in a little artificial wait. Uh, and it won't be very long. Let's just make it 0.15 seconds. And so now our robot will drive forward very quickly and then it'll stop and wait for 0.15 seconds. And now what we want to do, this is the tricky part. Uh, we're going to create a behavior where our robot is going to turn 180 degrees. So once again, I want to grab the set vase value to uh, block and I'm going to pull in two of those. And if you remember, uh, values above 50 spin in one direction and value below 50 spin in the other. So in this case, I want to create a turning behavior in my robot. So I can set my faces two and three to a value of 25, so I'm spinning sort of slow in one direction, and 75, so I'm spinning sort of slow in the other direction. And that will create a turning behavior for my robot. Now, we don't want him to turn forever, so we're gonna go back to the wait command, and we're gonna pull in a uh, wait seconds block. And I'm gonna set that to a value of 0.48 seconds. Now this is the one block in this whole tutorial that you may need to change the value of depending on what kind of surface your robot is driving on. You may need more time, you may need less time. In this particular case, I'm driving on a relatively low pile carpet, so I need 0.48 seconds. Now, what happens after 0.48 seconds? I need my robot to stop before it begins to move. So what I'm gonna do is grab two more of these set vase value blocks here. And again, we're gonna set faces two and faces three to a value of 50. And that will bring our robot to a stop. Now, uh, we've created this little sentry robot here and like all good sentries, I need him to wait when he's on patrol, but I don't want him to wait that long. So I'm gonna have him wait for 1.2 seconds before he gets bored. And then we're gonna have him return to his original position and stand guard again. So after turning around, he's gonna wait 1.2 seconds, see if anything's gonna happen. And then he's gonna drive back. So we need to grab the more blocks uh, section and pull down two more of our trusty set vase value twos and we are going to have our robot begin to drive back to where he came from or where she came from and this time we're going to set both values to zero so now our robot is driving forward and because he drove forward for two seconds, we need to drop in and have our little robot drive forward for another two seconds. And that should return the robot to about where it came from in the first place, but it's still facing the wrong direction. So what we're gonna need to do is bring our robot to a stop. So once again, let's pull in our little face values here. Notice the repeating pattern here. Uh, we are going to have faces two and faces three set to values of 50. And after a very brief pause, so we know that it's come to a complete stop. Uh, let's make this one again 0.15. Uh, we're going to go back and grab our set face values too, and we're going to duplicate this behavior that we had going on up here, this turning behavior. So we're going to set face values too, and set face value too. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is set face value two to uh, 75, where before it was 25. So we're gonna set that one to 75 and we're gonna set phase three to 25. So that way we're offsetting any little differences in our motors. And now we have a robot that's going to drive forward, stop, turn around, wait a second, drive back to where it came from, stop, turn around. And at this point, we need to make sure it stops turning at the proper amount of time. So uh, last time we were using 0.48 seconds. This time we're gonna use 0.48 seconds as well. And we need to uh, make sure that this is equal in both cases. So if you changed this value up here, we need to make sure we're changing this value down here. Now, 
One last command for our robot here. We need to make sure that it stops turning one more time. So we're gonna set face value two to 50, and then we're gonna drag in another block here and set face value three to 50. Now that more or less completes our program. But what happens is that it will only run one time. So what we need to do is add a uh, control setting that makes our program run indefinitely. And we, for that, we're gonna use this forever block. So I'm gonna drag this forever block in. And you notice that just like the if block, it has this little cutout. And this time, what we're gonna do is pull down on this set uh, sensor to face value block here to separate our two blocks. Now we have three different blocks here. And what I'm gonna do is drag this whole big block and I'm gonna put it inside the forever block. And then I'm gonna connect my forever block back up to my uh, program here. And that is our program. So congratulations, you've completed the tutorial, you've done your first program, and in order to start your robot, what you're gonna do is click this little green flag up here, or you can double click on your uh, code here to start running your robot. Before you do that, make sure that you've put your robot in a safe place. Go ahead and put it on the ground so it doesn't run away from you. Make sure that there's plenty of room to drive in front of it uh, and that it's not on the edge of a table or something like that so it doesn't go crash. This concludes our Stoic Sentinel tutorial. I hope you had fun following along and building your robot. Be sure to subscribe to the Mod Robotics YouTube channel for more great tutorials and robots. Please share your robots with us on Facebook or Twitter or whatever social network you like best using the hashtag MyMoss. Until next time, I'm Stu, the robot promoter, and I'd like to thank you for building with me.